Hey everybody, it's Emily at Arg Schooling, and welcome back to another Homeschool Tidbits. Welcome back to Build Your Library's Homeschool Tidbits, Episode 15, How to Raise a Reader. In this weekly video series, I'll delve briefly into a topic related to homeschooling, and I'll share some of my knowledge with you as a longtime homeschooling mother of four children, three of whom have graduated. I've been homeschooling for a long time. <laughs> I started when my oldest was four, and now she's graduating from college in literally two weeks. I am currently down to my last and final homeschooled child, and she's just a year away from starting high school. So I only have about five years left to go, and then I'll have graduated all four of my children from homeschooling. And that's crazy, right? Like it doesn't feel like it's been that long, but it has been that long. And lately I've been doing a lot of reflecting and thinking back and thinking about how we started and how my style has grown and changed over the years. If you have followed me or build your library at all, you no doubt know that reading is kind of my thing. I have always loved books, and I think it started because my mother loved to read. And of course she read to me, but more than that, I saw her reading and loving books. She loved stories, and I grew up around books. We would take frequent trips to the library, and I loved getting lost in the aisles. I loved discovering new stories and new authors. I loved rereading my favorite books. It was a common occurrence, and I always had a book at hand. When I wasn't reading, I was watching movies and TVs with my father. I was always immersed in stories. When I started homeschooling, I wanted my children to love reading too. They didn't have to love it as much as I do, but I wanted them to find the magic in a well-written tale. I consider this to be my biggest success in homeschooling. My oldest daughter majored in creative writing, and she wants to build her career around books. Writing them, selling them, publishing, whatever she can do to be closer to the books. <laughs> My second oldest is an artist, and she's considering a career in animation. Her twin is also an artist, considering a career in comic arts. Now, those two things might not sound like bookish careers, or anything to do with reading at all, and I'll admit to you that my twins are not big readers. However, they are really into good stories, and they both want to go into a career that I feel is book adjacent, animation and comics. They're both about stories. My youngest daughter is still growing and changing, but she loves to read nonetheless. She's still working out what it is that she likes in books and I'm still introducing her to lots of new genres and stories. What she does with that down the road is still yet to be seen, but I couldn't be prouder of the four of them. So how do you raise a reader? There are many things that I did that I believe led to my children's love of books and stories. I'm gonna share these tips with you, not to guarantee that your child will become a voracious reader, but to inspire you to build a family culture around books and reading. That is literally the best tip I can give you. If you want your children to love books, you need to show them how to do that. You have to lead by example. First, read and discuss books on the regular. Obviously, if you want your children to love to read, you need to read to them. I read to my children from the time they were born until they graduated high school. When they were babies, we would read board books together. And as when they were teens, we read classics and popular young adult titles. We traveled across Middle Earth. We visited the wild things, toured a wacky chocolate factory, founded a new rabbit warren, and grabbed a bath towel for a trip through space. I made reading aloud a priority, and I stuck to it. Even on days that went haywire, we managed to squeeze in our current read aloud. But more than just reading together, we talked about books. Since we were always reading something, we always had plenty to chat about. You can learn a lot about your child based on the way they relate to books. We were able to discuss so many big ideas, death, 
grief, love, oppression. They were able to experience life in other time periods and in faraway places. We found windows in books to lives very different from our own. And we also found mirrors so they could see themselves in stories too. Because these topics were all introduced through stories, it was easy for us to find ways to bring them up in our everyday conversation. We were simply always reading and always talking. And my children were able to make their own connections, connections between different books, between different historical events relating to those books, and so much more by exposing them to a world of stories. We guide them into our world from the comfort and safety of our laps. My next tip is to give your children plenty of options. As a child, I was a voracious reader, and part of why I loved to reread stories so much was because I never had quite enough books. Could also explain my crazy stacks now. Now I have all of the books. I read books like I breathed air. So when it came time to guide my children into a world of reading, I wanted to provide them with lots of reading material. We took frequent trips to our local library where they could make their own discoveries. I never policed their reading. If they thought they could manage it, I let them try. I chose books that I wanted in our home library, and I slowly built that up over the years. I wanted to get to a place where we had plenty of reading material across many genres and covering a lot of different interesting topics. Today, I can successfully homeschool history, geography, literature, poetry, science, art, all right from the comforts of our home library. And my final tip for you is to model reading for your children. I'm convinced that seeing my mother's love of reading is what led me to love to read. Parents hold a lot of sway over their children, particularly in their early years. And if you really want them to form a habit, we need to model that habit for them. They need to see you reading regularly. And if you aren't a big reader, or you're in the midst of babies and toddlers, this might feel like a big challenge. But if you can carve out even just 15 minutes a day, just that little bit of time will go a long way towards teaching our children that reading is a lifelong joy. But it isn't enough to just read a book once in a while. We need to show them that when we want to learn something new or we have a question, we turn to books. It's so convenient to just grab your phone and Google things when you want to answer a question, but you need a model for your children that books hold information too. Did your homeschool studies make you curious about life in the Roman Empire? Now go to the library and go find some books for you for your personal education. Are you trying to learn a new skill like canning or gardening? Get some books on that topic to help you in your endeavors cookbooks, craft books, art, magazines. There are so many ways that you can add reading into your day. When a child grows up in a culture of reading and literature, they're gonna grow up to appreciate it. To build that culture, we need to make reading a priority in our lives. Fill your home with books, read together, show them that adults read for fun and knowledge as well. You will be well on your way to raising a reader. And as I said earlier, reading, it's kind of my thing. And I have several other tips, tricks, and articles on similar topics on my blog if you're looking for more information. If you found this video helpful, I hope that you'll check out Build Your Library curriculum. Build Your Library is a secular, literature-rich homeschool curriculum inspired by Charlotte Mason's philosophy of education. Based on nearly 20 years of homeschooling, I created a curriculum that I wish I'd had when I first started homeschooling my children. I've spent thousands of hours cultivating the best literature to enhance your children's studies. Our lesson plans make homeschooling simple. Just open your lesson plans, gather your books, and go. Our easy to use lesson plans include everything you need to homeschool. Just add math. Choose from our full year K-12 levels as well as our fun topical unit studies. With Build Your Library, you will cultivate a home library filled with captivating literature and raise children who become lifelong learners. So snuggle up with our lesson plans in a good book or three and have your best homeschool year ever. I hope you found this tidbit helpful. Come back next week for more homeschool inspiration. Until then, 
Happy reading. Bye.